The Mormon Meteor is a supercharged Art Deco speedster that once dominated the record books. It may be one of the most important American cars ever built, and it's one of a kind. For almost a hundred years, racers the world over had been united in the pursuit of a single goal, the land speed record. The world of racing had long outgrown its former racetracks on deserted beaches and closed circuits. They were looking for a place where they could test the limits of what was possible. It was then that two unlikely engineers challenged the status quo by designing a car to compete against the raw power of airplane engines. This single automobile put Utah on the map for land speed enthusiasts everywhere. The story of the Mormon Meteor is one of ambition and design, but before we look under the hood, we need to take a step back and look at the world the Mormon Meteor changed. Fred and Augie Duesenberg were two dominant names in early automotive racing. From their shop in St. Paul, Minnesota, they won race after race, becoming known as the cutting edge in automotive design. The two brothers were incredible engineers and designed a reliable, fast car that the elite throughout the 20s wanted. Meanwhile, across the country, David Abbott Jenkins, known as Ab, found his passion driving on the wild, empty expanse of the Bonneville Salt Flats near his home in Utah. Ab Jenkins could see that the Salt Flats would be an ideal place to set new records. Up until that time in our country, why we were using Ormond Beach or Daytona Beach in Florida, which is suitable up to a certain extent, but they didn't have the, the straightaways like the Salt Flats did. With no traffic, Jenkins found no reason to slow down, building his hobby into a passion. He developed an eye for automotive design and how it translated into raw speed. And he had a vision of the Bonneville Salt Flats becoming the next destination for a generation of racers. The problem was the salt flats were so remote to try to get people to come out there to set records. So Ab Jenkins took it upon himself to use the salt flats, which is exactly the genesis of the Mormon Meteor. When Jenkins spotted the chassis for the new run of 500 Duesenberg Model Js, he knew he had the beginning of something special. Starting in May 1934, Jenkins worked with Augie Duesenberg to create a custom-made racer built for the salt flats. The Mormon Meteor would take the breath away of any car enthusiast. It's beautiful design, there's not a bad line on it. It was refreshingly modern in the mid-30s. If, if you look at cars throughout the 20s, even going into the early 30s, they were just not very aerodynamic. When Herb Newport decided to design this car, evidently he really thought about wind and how it would flow around the body. And you can see it's a very streamlined body. It only has a single headlight in the front. They took off as many things as they possibly could that would cut down probably on wind drag. And it really was a very unusual looking body for a Duesenberg. Most of them were very flat grills, flat windshields. So this had quite a bit more curvature to the body and made it a much more desirable car. Built on a standard 142 and a half inch wheelbase chassis, the Duesenberg Special featured a steeply sloped radiator grill and fully enclosed front frame horns. The ram's horn manifold as used on the Mormon Meteor resembled a ram's horn and helped to flow the fuel air mixture from the supercharger into the engine. They created an engine, a dual overhead cam, eight cylinder engine, four valves per cylinder that developed about 400 horsepower, which was a tremendous amount of of course, for a passenger car in those days. The Duesenberg engine not only was designed for stamina and high power, but it also is a thing of beauty. If you examine one, you can see a great use of aluminum. They're just a marvelous thing to look at, a feat of engineering, a tremendous piece of equipment. The sound is, is probably the singular thing that really turns people on with this car. If anybody's riding behind this car, and they hear it, the exhaust note coming out of this car is unbelievable. The wheels and tires were given radical new fenders with tapered teardrop fairings 
to better guide airflow over the wheels. They used a special drop tubular front axle that dramatically dropped the engine, providing better stability and air penetration. If you ever get a chance to look at it from the rear, it has a almost a wing-like look to it from the uh, back side. The other thing they did is they obviously had to boost the performance of the engine to compete with the English who had taken the record. And so they basically took a standard SJ engine and they modified the supercharger a little bit. They put some special racing carburetors on it. They increased the compression ratio, put some uh, higher lift camshafts in it to boost the horsepower from 320 up to 400 horsepower, which was very significant for the early 1930s. The Duesenberg Special was ready for action, but disaster was waiting just around the corner. In its first attempt, a bearing failed, nearly ending its racing life before it started. What could Duesenberg and Jenkins do with the race about to start to make the Mormon Meteor ride again? The car that would soon be known as the Mormon Meteor was crafted specifically to become the fastest car in the world under the torture tests of the Bonneville Salt Flats. But when a bearing failed on his first attempt, the experimental car nearly lost everything. The special engines that Duesenberg designed were sent back to the plant in Indianapolis, where new bearings were installed. Rushed back to the flats just in time, they were quickly put to the test. But disaster struck a second time when the crankcase split. With records on the line and the world watching, Duesenberg and Jenkins installed the second engine. Exhausted from the work he was putting in on the car, Jenkins allowed his relief driver, Tony Galata, to take the wheel. On August 31st, 1935, Jenkins and Duesenberg watched as their Duesenberg special began its quest to cover more miles than ever before within the 24-hour limit. After stopping every 400 miles for a safety check, their experimental automobile covered 3,253 miles at an average speed of 135 miles an hour, a new world record. Jenkins and Duesenberg didn't have long to celebrate their triumph. Only days later, Captain George Eiston broke the world record using a modified aircraft engine. But the Mormon Meteor's real victory was in making history. Jenkins and Duesenberg modified an existing chassis that would spawn a legion of imitators. And the Bonneville Salt Flats became the worldwide land speed destination for a generation of racers. This attracted the attention of the uh, people in England that were trying to set records and had no suitable place to run. And they also used the idea of a car that could do 24-hour speed runs showed the safety and reliability of their cars. So it was sort of a sales uh, technique that I think older cars used. And if you knew that a car could last 24 hours, going 135 mile an hour, chances are the car that you bought off the showroom floor would be a very good car also. The significance of Ab Jenkins and the Mormon Meteor cannot be overstated. It had a tremendous impact on the development of the automobiles. Jenkins retooled his automobile for the 1936 racing season, which was even more competitive than the last. With a new 1,650 cubic inch Curtis Conqueror engine, the Duesenberg Special became known as the Mormon Meteor and left its mark as one of the most important cars of all time. Duesenbergs were the first American car to use a straight eight-cylinder engine. But probably the two things that I would say would be the most significant contributions that we still use today, four-wheel hydraulic brakes and supercharging. I think the most impressive thing about the Mormon Meteor chassis is it was a stock Duesenberg chassis. We're talking a passenger car here that anybody could be driving. They took it out there and set these records. Unlike the, the British, who were using purpose-built cars just strictly for this, these attempts. In 1935, the Moore Meteor set the 24-hour endurance speed record at 135.4 miles an hour, as well as other smaller and shorter distance speed records. Its average speed of 148.64 miles per hour over 48 hours remains a world record to this day. In 1929, when the, when the SJ engine came out, it was aluminum cylinder head, four valves per cylinder, overhead camshafts, supercharged with multiple carburetors. Those are things that you see today that are what you would consider advanced. So from 1929, you, you look back and you see maybe things haven't quite changed that much. So. From the Salt Flats to Salt Lake City, the Mormon Meteor changed an entire generation of cars 
It introduced innovations that we still use to this day. But could the Mormon meteor help Ab Jenkins win yet another hotly contested race far from the salt flats? Find out after this. The Mormon meteor could be driven on the street, and in fact it was. After the Mormon meteor's career had ended, they took the Curtis Conqueror engine out, put the original Duesenberg engine back in, and Ab Jenkins drove it for a number of years. In fact, it helped Jenkins in a completely different kind of race, his election as mayor of Salt Lake City. And the idea that it was a doozy came from Duesenberg, and it's just an American icon. Since its speed days, the Mormon Meteor has undergone some changes, but it retains the spirit of a racer. It has been lovingly restored by its few owners, and it has won awards, including best in show at the 2007 Pebble Beach Concours d'Elegance. Today, the Mormon Meteor is an example of what happens when ambition pushes the limits of design. It's a testament to the raw power of the open road, and with the breakthrough design ideas that help put the Bonneville Salt Flats on the map, the Mormon Meteor is absolutely one of a kind.